And that is that. We've got a Leptos Wasm UI server running on fly.io, which means that we have server-side rendering working and client-side rendering with rehydration working. This leaves us with a massive gap though, user accounts and access control. The pre-existing project already uses Cognito for user accounts, so we won't be migrating to any other service. And one other thing that I wanna do is remove the Amplify client-side JavaScript package because it happens to be quite large. And I've run into quite a few issues actually with the Amplify package. So to log a user in, we'll have to take advantage of the Rust AWS SDK, and we'll also have to manage our own sessions. Overall, the architecture we're using is an API server, a UI server, and of course the client. The UI server is where we'll be implementing the sessions, while the API server is where we'll deal with dealing with Cognito and interfacing with anything that we need to do with AWS. My first attempt at this used async session, which is what my second attempt using Axum sessions built on top of. This kind of worked, but also had some interesting restrictions based on the way that Leptos expected to be able to clone values combined with some interior mutability that existed in these crates when I was trying to use them. Now, there are a couple of PRs open to actually fix this issue, so this may not be true in the future. However, the biggest issue is that I wasn't able to take advantage of Leptos's action forms. I ended up writing my own Rust and Wasm code to actually handle gathering the artifacts from the form, serializing those, and sending them up to the server. At which point I also had to handle that request on my own using Axum's tooling. Now the action forms are actually really useful and I quite like using them, so I would like to use them if I could. So I migrated. Somewhere along the line, somebody implemented a sessions example using a different crate in Leptos's examples folder. This used the Axum sessions auth crate, which is different from the Axum sessions, the Axum session, and the async sessions crates. Basically, when working with sessions and Axum, it feels like any combination of those words will land you on a crate that is not necessarily the crate you want or the crate you happen to be using. Honestly, I still have some issues remembering whether I'm using the Axum sessions crate with the S or without the S. Now, the example app works. So if you wanna go check out what sessions look like in a real Leptos app, go check out the example, which I'll link below. But the underlying crate has already been renamed on crates.io and received a new release. So I decided to use the renamed version and use the example as a template, so to speak, for how to integrate between Axum and Leptos. So where did I end up? Using Axum Session, no S on this crate name, by itself without the higher level library and passing that into Leptos as context using some additional handler functions, I was able to get database backed secure sessions. The sessions then are controlled by the UI server and HTTP only, and the Cognito integration happens in the API server. On the API server, handling errors is particularly important because this is a particularly important piece of functionality for the Rust Adventure site. So that is to say, this error comes in super useful. Individually parsing out all of the errors that could go wrong in the login process and choosing whether or not to handle those and which ones we are currently handling is something that I'm really happy to have, even though it required a couple of extra, you know, minutes of finagling and writing code. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the way that Leptos requires you to glue the outside world into the Leptos world, but there are reasons for this. The approach that Leptos takes to get anything from the outside world, such as the Axum world, into the Leptos world is to have these additional bootstrapping functions that use a scope that you can then provide context to. This is something like handle server functions with context. And while this is fine, and to be clear, works, which is the most important part, it's just a speed bump that I wish I had time to fix. But it's also important to realize that server functions don't equate directly to Ajax or a single fetch request. And given the over decade of experience I have with other UI technologies, it did take me a minute to get my brain in the right place to realize this. And to be honest, overall, I had a lot going on while I was building out this functionality for the new Rust Adventure site. So not all of my frustrations were purely technical and it was a little more frustrating than it needed to be. Overall, Leptos is constantly improving the experience of using the framework and I'm excited to see where this goes over the next year. If you enjoy my videos, don't forget to subscribe to Rust Adventure because that funds not only these videos, but also the more in-depth researched workshops on the site. And I'll see you in the next video.